Okay guys, this is your video review for the projectile test. Uh, number one, uh, says what's the acceleration in the X and the acceleration in the Y? Well, this is it right here. The acceleration in the X is 0 meters per second, as it always has been, and the acceleration in the Y is negative 10 meters per second squared, as it's always been. Number two, for a horizontally launched projectile, how do the horizontal and vertical velocities compare? The horizontal are always constant. They move at a constant speed. It doesn't change. The vertical velocities, they're always increasing their speed. Number three, what will happen if I drop an object straight down at the same time I shoot an object out of a cannon horizontally? Will they land at the same time? Yes, they will hit at the same time because X and Y act independently. Number four, we have this setup. It says a bomber is flying horizontally at 200 meters per second. So that's your velocity in the X. Uh, it sh lets go of its bombs 2,500 meters in advance of the target. That's dx, and you're looking for dy. But in order to find dy, you have to find a time. We use vx equals dx over t to find the time, uh, and that's 200 equals 2,500 over t. So t is equal to 12.5 seconds. Okay, 12.5 seconds. Uh, and then that's not the answer, then we have to plug that back into dy, so dy is equal to 1 half times negative 10 times 12.5 squared plus the initial velocity in the y times 12.5. But the initial velocity in the y is 0 because it leaves at a horizontal angle, uh, and so we end up just doing dy is equal to negative 5 times 12.5 squared which should get you 781 meters. Number five. Uh, a steel marble leaves a horizontal ramp at a speed of six meters per second. So that's your velocity in the X. Uh, it hits or falls to the floor one meter below. That's your distance in the Y. Uh, so for part A, we're looking for how long it was in the air. So we're going to use dy equals to figure that out. Uh, and this is the formula. Remember that, whoops, remember that with projectiles that are fired horizontally, the initial velocity in the y is 0. So then we're left with 1 equals 1 half times negative 10 times t squared. And this is supposed to be negative. So uh, the reason this is negative is because it's going down. So we divide, we get 1 divided by 5 equals t squared, square root, square root, T is equal to 0.45 seconds. Okay, so then we plug that back into VX equals DX over T to find B. Uh, and we get uh, 6 equals DX over 0.45. Multiply 0.45 up and we get DX is equal to 2.7 meters. All right. Number 6. Uh, it says <clears throat> you are uh, somebody. Melanie rolls a 10 gram marble off a ramp, a horizontal with a horizontal velocity of 2.1 meters. Basically, it's just saying it rolls off the table at 2.1 meters per second. The marble falls in a cup that is 0.71 meters away from the table's edge. How high is the table? So you've got to first you got to first find time. So we know that 0.71 is dx, which means we need to use we've got dx and we've got vx. So we can use vx equals dx over t to find time. So 2.1 equals dx uh, whoops, equals 0.71 over t. So solve for t. t is equal to 0.71 divided by 2.1. And if you do that, you should get, hang on one second, uh, 0.34. So t is equal to 0.34 uh, seconds. All right, um, and now you have to find dy. So dy is equal to one half a y t squared plus v i y t. The v i y is zero because it's horizontal, so that means that dy is equal to one half times negative ten times 0.34 squared, and so dy is equal to. Uh, Sorry, one second. dy is equal to 0.57 meters. 
All right, number next one, seven. On this one, we have a object being shot at an angle of 40 degrees above the ground at 32 meters per second. So the very first thing we have to do before we do anything else is to break this guy up into the components. And these are the components. All right, so we end up with VX equals 24.5, VIY is 20.6. All right, once we get these numbers, we can forget about this guy. All right, all we are concerned with are these numbers right here, 24.5 for VX and 20.6 for VIY. All right, for question A, find the time to the maximum height. So remember that we figured this out in class, T top is equal to the initial velocity in the Y divided by 10, which means this is 20.6 divided by 10, or 2.06 seconds. Uh, for B, we want the time back to the ground, so that's the total time it's in the air. Remember that is double the time to the top, which gives us 4.12 seconds. For C, we want to find the maximum height. Well, that's the dy formula. So dy is equal to 1 half ayt squared plus viyt. Notice in this case we do have an initial velocity in the y, it's 20.6. Which time are we going to use? Well, we're going to use the time to the top. So, because that's the time to the middle, and the middle is where it's at the highest point. So, we plug this in and we get 1 half times negative 10 times uh, 2.06 squared plus uh, 20.6 times 2.06 and if you plug all that in you get that dy is equal to 21.15 meters it is critical for you to plug that in as negative right there okay that negative 10 has to be negative and then for D, it asks us the horizontal displacement. Horizontal displacement is dx. So we're going to use vx equals dx over t. And vx is 24.5. But in this case, I'm going to use, for time, 4.12. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is because uh, that's the time that gets us all the way back to the ground. So if I multiply 4.12 by 24.5, I get dx is equal to 100.7 meters. Okay? Now number 8, we had to do a little changing. Uh, so I, I gave you a different problem. So if you need uh, to figure that out, reference the previous Twitter post, and you should be able to find it. Uh, but... The important thing is, is you've got an object being fired at 8 meters per second at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so if you'll remember, the very first thing we need to do is to break it into components. So Vx is equal to 8 cosine 45, which gives us 5.65 meters per second. And Viy is equal to 8 sine 45, which should also give us 5.65 meters per second. Okay, it's fine that they're the same. They should be because it's a 45 degree triangle. All right. So from there, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, solve A. So A asks us to find the distance of, uh, at a distance of one meter away horizontally, where is the ping pong ball? So obviously it's one meter away horizontally. What we want to know is this distance in the Y uh, right here. Okay, so we want to know this distance in the Y at one meter. So in order to do that we need a time. So we know this is dx. So I've got to find time. I've got dx and I've got vx. So uh, vx equals dx over t. Whoops, sorry. That's a little bit too wide. Uh, vx equals dx over t and we know that that is 5.65 equals 1 over t. t then is equal to 1 divided by 5.65. Uh, which, if you solve for that, that is 0.18 seconds. Okay, so now we need to plug that into the distance in the y formula. Okay, to find the distance in the y. So distance in the y is equal to 1 half, 1 half times negative 10 times 0.18 squared plus 5.65 times 0.18. And if you solve that, you should get uh, 
let's see, what would you get? Uh, about point, point 0.85 meters. Uh, but that's how high it is above this point. So this right here is 0.85 meters. Then we have to include this 2.5 on top of it. So we add 2.5 to it because it started off 2.5 meters above the ground. And so the final distance in the Y would be 3.35. And again, we're adding that 2.5 meters because it started off 2.5 meters above the ground. Okay, number 8B says, what is the vertical speed of the ping pong ball after two seconds? Well, on that one, you're going to use the AY equals formula because it's the one that has final velocity in the Y in it and time. So negative 10 equals uh, VFY, which is what we're looking for, minus 5.65. That's the initial velocity in the Y. I got it from right here. Okay. And divided by 2, which is the time that it told us. So if we solve, we get negative 20 equals VFY minus 5.65. Add 5.65 to the other side. And you get negative 14.35 meters per second equals VFY. All right. And then lastly, 8C, how high does the ping pong ball go? So first step there is to find the time to the top. Remember, time to the top equals initial velocity in the y divided by 10. So t top in this case would be equal to 5.65 divided by 10, which would be 0.565 seconds. Okay, so then we plug that into dy. dy is equal to 1 half times negative 10 times 0.565 squared plus the initial velocity in the y, which is 5.65 times 0.565. Okay. So we multiply that out and we get 1.6 meters. But then you have to add that 2.5 again. All right, just like we did back here, this 2.5 starts off 2.5 meters in the air. You have to add it again here, which gives you a final answer of 4.1 meters. All righty. Number nine, closing in on the end. All right, so this is the way it actually looks. So it says an arrow is fired hor or aimed horizontally. So we're aiming it along this red line. Pretend, pretend that's a straight horizontal line. All right, so it aims straight toward this guy. But the, the arrow ends up falling because it's under it's a projectile, and it falls 0.095 meters. And then you know that it's 32 meters away. So this, this right here is your distance in the X, and this right here is your distance in the Y. So if we have a distance in the Y and something is fired horizontally, we can always use that to find time. So 0.095 equals 1 half times negative 10 times T squared plus VIYT. But remember that the initial velocity in the y when you fire something horizontally is 0. So we're left with 0.095 equals negative 5 t squared. Sorry, that's a terrible 5. All right, so 0.095 equals negative 5 t squared. All right, so there's one more thing I have to do. I have to make that negative because it went down 0.095 meters. So I divide, and I get 0.095 divided by 5. Square rooted equals t, and that gives us 0.138 seconds. So if that's our time, we now have to find the initial speed. Well, if it's fired horizontally, the only speed that it can have is vx. So vx equals dx over t. You know dx is 32, so vx is equal to 32 divided by 0.138, and that gives us vx is equal to 232 meters per second. All right, number 10, last one. All right, so on this one, a projectile launching device fires a golf ball at an angle of 55 degrees uh, above the ground. The muzzle velocity is 15 meters per second. How far, how high does the ball go? Well, first thing you got to do is break it into components, which is what I did right here. And in order to find the highest point, we have to find the time to the top first, time to the top. Hopefully you know this by now, is initial velocity in the y divided by 10, which would be 12.3 divided by 10, which would be 1.23 seconds. Then we plug that time into the distance in the y. So dy is equal to 1 half times negative 10 times 1.23 squared plus 12.3 times 1.23. All right, plug all that stuff in and you end up getting 
7.4 meters. All right, that gives us that gives us a. And what is the velocity at the highest point? Well, what you have to remember is at the highest point, the velocity in the y right there is zero. But it still has the velocity in the x. And so the velocity in the x for us is 8.6. That's the x. Well, dang it. <laughs> All right, vx, there we go, is 8.6. Since that's the velocity that it has up here at the top, velocity in the y again is zero. Still has that 8.6 meters per second in the x direction. That is your answer. Then on C, it asks us where is the ball. So what we need to do is find dx and dy at time equals 3 seconds. So vx equals dx over t. That's easy. 8.6 equals dx over 3. Plug it in and you get 25.8 meters uh, equals dx. Okay? And then if we plug in dy, dy is equal to 1 half times negative 10 times 3 squared plus 12.3 times, uh, 12 times 3. So if we try to solve this one, we get 8.1, sorry, negative 8.1 meters. And I actually messed up on that one on the, uh, on the review. It should be negative 8.1 meters. I'll make a note. All right. So, anyway, this is the uh, answer key. If you need any, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me tomorrow. All right? Uh, good luck studying.